we uh, wanted to ask each of you to kind of briefly introduce yourselves. Hey, so uh, I'm Christian Mitchell. I'm um, really happy to be up here, be here with all of you, to be here with uh, Will and with uh, Grandma Moses, I believe, uh, the reader, <laughs> dubbed her. Uh, yeah. Wasn't going to let that slide. Sorry. Uh, so I'm originally from Chicago, grew up in the western suburbs, Maywood and Westchester, kind of split time, only child of a single mom. Uh, how did I get here? Um, uh, in college, uh, I met uh, Will Burns, who became a very close uh, friend and, and mentor of mine and um, kind of set me on the path of public service. I was going down a very different uh, route. I was hoping to be uh, rich and have a bunch of old cars at this point. I'm off that beaten path a little bit. Um, and um, well, I, I just got give it, give it time. You'll give political it time. career is still. Uh, yeah, you can be so, a lobbyist someday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I um, I started community organizing right out of uh, out of college with Southsiders Organized for Unity and Liberation, which I know, is, I know is a group some people here are familiar with. Um, and in organizing, I saw that politics with leaders like Tony Preckwinkle and Lisa Madigan and others could be an effectual way to do things. And I thought I could either sit on the outside and lob rocks in or I could get involved and, and get my hands dirty. So uh, I decided to run for office shortly thereafter. I do, I do appreciate you coming here, Christian, because I know you, some people thought I may not have been so easy on you in one of those articles I wrote the last time uh, when you were running against Jay Travis. And this uh, crowd here tends to uh, lean a little toward the left. Um, so you're kind of walking into the lion's den. I give you a lot of credit for having the guts to do that. That said, um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the distinction I see between your two careers, uh, well, you haven't even started your career yet. So you, have, you haven't had a chance to ruin it, no. Um, the distinction I see between <laughs> is, is that you, you got, Christian, into office by virtue of your connections to some very powerful uh, mentors, particularly Tony Preckwinkle. And uh, you, Will, got into office by knocking the establishment out, so to speak. Uh, so, um, so my question is, is there pressure on you uh, to tow a party line in Springfield? Do you have pressure on you uh, from either Rom or Tony or from anybody else to force you to uh, vote a certain way? Yeah, so I would I'd say no, I, I want to push back just a little bit on that characterization. I mean, I um, certainly, um, look, I, I'm never going to uh, disavow my connection to Tony Preckwinkle or to Will Burns. I'm very proud of it. Um, they're both um, very strong progressive politicians who've done a lot of work on the prison industrial complex, affordable housing, minimum wage issues that I care about. So I'm very proud to have been mentored by those folks. I, I think that it gives me a certain drive uh, to really go after the Christian Mitchells <laughs> of the world um, and, and really push for, for that. So Man. Christian, how much, how much time? All right, let's give a moment. Yeah. Moment to respond. For <laughs> clapping for going after the Christian right. Mitchells of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, how much time do you as, who, a, as an won, elected official? Way, yeah. <laughs> how much time do you have to spend? Is winning cutting people's pensions? Well, hold on. Let's. <laughs> All right, so so let's uh, let's was, get into it a little bit. Yeah, if you don't mind. let's get into it. And I also want to hear, like, how much of your job is hearing from lobbyists. Yeah, it, it's significant, and let's circle back to that. Um, so so the first thing I'll say is that you know Adrian and I are, are I would say separate of this friends, and frankly, um, we're with each other on ninety percent of the issues, and on the issues we're not, we'll close the door to my office and scream at each other, and then uh, go right back to, uh, to to working with each other. You know, pensions was or scream at each other on or, the show here or, for. Or Entertainment purposes. Um, <laughs> if only my mother had loved me. So, uh, pensions was the most difficult vote I've I've taken during my time in Springfield, and I want to um, kind of explain. Uh, it was as hard as it was on us. I, I understand that, sir. So, um, there was a. It was a very difficult. Everybody be respectful. It's, be respectful. it's okay. It, look, there, it, he has a right to be passionate about it. Like I said, it was a difficult time, and and. and it was a situation where this wasn't like immigration or um, uh, same-sex marriage or even, I would argue, as time goes forward, marijuana, where if you wait long enough, the right public policy prescription comes along. People evolve. Public opinion gets to a certain place, and you can pass the right thing. We were looking at a situation where um, our state pensions were in aggregate about between 31 and 34% funded, depending on who you talk to. And every day, we didn't do something. 
every day we didn't do something. It was literally getting worse. The liability was going to go up, which meant ultimately what happened was going to go down. My feeling was that 2404, which I know was backed by a lot of uh, the union folks, would not only potentially have the same constitutional questions as SB1, it might also get us in a situation where we pass something, call it reform, the problem continues to get worse, and then five years later, we're back in a situation asking our workers to take an even worse deal that hurts them even worse. So what I, wh where I landed was we have to stop this now. I could argue about it forever, but what's going to happen is the benefits continue to go down. Uh, because uh, the liability continues to go up. We potentially have this draped around the neck of a Democratic Assembly as well as uh, Governor Quinn. You end up with Bruce Rauner and less than veto-proof majorities. All of a sudden, you're in this situation where anything less than Senate Bill 1 stands no chance, and more likely, uh, Mr. Rauner and his buddies would push for a 401k style plan that might both be good for his business, but also uh, <laughs> the thing that idealistically they believe in. And now our workers are at 25% and then 15% and then 10% to where it's physically untenable to save the system as it is. Now, once again, you don't have to agree with my logic on this, uh, but that's why I made the decision I made. It was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made with a grandfather who was a union steel worker, knowing what that job meant for my ability to be here. So that's why I made the decision I made. Does the mic one open to the audience? I think so. All right. Yeah. Any questions for our distinguished panel? Uh, right there. AFNI representative has suggested that state of Illinois pensions are constitutionally guaranteed. Is that true? So the question was, uh, does the Constitution protect pension benefits? The answer is uh, there is language indeed, yes, that says uh, benefits shall not be diminished or impaired. Uh, it is the reading of myself and others that um, if a system implodes upon itself, it is both diminished and impaired. Uh, which is why um, those of us who supported it felt that the bill was indeed constitutional. We, yeah, of course this issue is in court. <laughs> and we recently got a stay um, on the implementation of the bill that was hopeful. Um, but we, we read that language as being very clear. <laughs> Mr. Klonsky? Yes, uh, 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 Representative Mitchell, when, when uh, Lisa Mad uh, Madigan uh, testified before Judge Bells around the issue of the state. Uh, she agreed that the law was unconstitutional and said that it was the uh, police powers of the state that allowed the state to steal our pensions. Uh, in my case, uh, probably uh, $200,000 over the next uh, 20 years if I lived that long. Uh, uh, when you voted to take away my pension, aside from the constitutional issues, what about the moral covenant that you had with the 30% of the public employees who live in your district? So uh, I think everybody heard the question. Um, my moral covenant in that case um, was, I know some people would prefer a lie that sues to a truth that hurts, but I couldn't do that. Um, there is this, uh, I guess, feeling um, that somehow everybody who voted yes on that bill is a faceless bastard who had no feeling about it. and. Um, just did it because it was so ordered by the powers that be. That's not the case. Um, we could pass, we could close every corporate loophole we wanted to. We could pass a fair tax at the Ralph Martiri levels, whatever you wanted. You're still going to run into a situation where if there were no action whatsoever, the worst thing that could possibly happen is the entire thing went down in flames. So I, I hear your, uh, your uh, look, this is the hardest vote I've ever taken and probably will ever have to take. Um, it broke my heart to do it, but I've explained on multiple occasions um, why I did what I did, and I'm sorry um, that it became necessary. First of all, thanks to all you guys. And second of all, thank you to all of our guests for uh, taking the time out to, again, offer yourselves up to take questions. We really appreciate it. Will Gazzardi, Christian Mitchell, and Adrian Alexander. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month.